forum. So I'm required to start with this script. As a preliminary matter, I'm Marianne Easley, Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Okay, Allison. Here. Diane. Here. Vanessa. Here. Kendra. Here. Jude is not here, Susie is not here, Nancy is not here, Linda is not here, and I'm here. Okay, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Jericho. Yes, in attendance. And Laura is not able to be here today. Um, good afternoon. This open meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Council on Aging is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. Now I'm gonna take a COVID test. <laughs> Just kidding, sorry. And that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, all supporting materials have been provided to members. Um, we're now turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do so, let me just um, remind you for the purposes of Diane, our secretary, please identify yourself by name um, before you speak, because that would help her. So that's the script. And we can move on from there to the next uh, item, which is approval of the agenda. Could someone please move for the approval of the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. It's Allison. A second. Second. Vanessa. Okay, all in favor, um, unfortunately, I have to do this by roll call. Um, so if you're in favor of the agenda, please say yes. Allison? Yes. Diane? Yes. Vanessa? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Marianne? Yes. Okay. Um, next is approval of the minutes of the last two meetings. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the minutes from July. Um, I expect those sometime in the future, but everyone should have received the August minutes and had a chance to read over them. So um, can I get somebody to move to approve them? I move to approve them. This is Kendra. Uh, second. I, uh, I can't probably. <laughs> uh, second, Allison. Um, any discussion of those or any uh, edits or changes? May I just say thank you to Al, uh, to Kendra for taking the notes. And yeah, thank you, Kendra. You, you may say thank you and I appreciate your- Very, very well done. Very impressed. Thank you. <laughs> so I have to roll call again, approval of the minutes. Um, Allison? Yes. Diane? Yeah. Vanessa? Yes. Kendra? Yes. Marianne, yes. Okay. Now we can go on to official business. Um, the first uh, item here is the Title III uh, grants uh, for which we made two applications. I apologize for this. I know it's gonna be a junk call, so let me mute. Um, okay. I can only apologize, sorry. Um, Allison, can you give us the update on where we stand with these grants that we were supposed to hear about by the end of August, which ended yesterday? Um, so we met our monthly council um, ESCCI meeting and there was no quorum. <laughs> so it happens to other, other boards too. So there are, th there's no information I can share outside that there were 26 letters of intent 
a letters of interest and 17 proposals that they were looking at. So um, we'll have to wait and see. So I guess, can we hope for the end of September? By then we'll know. I would think that, yeah. And I bet that um, I can share it with everybody prior to the next, our next meeting. Um, you know, once I hear, I'll let you know. The um, Elder Services usually meets the third Tuesday of the month. So once I can share, I certainly will. Um, what was what was the name of the meeting? That um, you it's for? Um, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands, ESCCI. Oh, okay. um, the board has to... Um, right. It has to ratify the proposal from the executive board or whatever. Um, okay. It's all in the language. So yeah, it's just a matter of a vote. Um, I guess we can move on to the second agenda item, which is the um, adult well health fair, which has now turned into the uh, flu shot clinic for uh, seniors 65 plus. Um, and Jude is not here, so I'll give you a very brief update because you've probably seen um, there have started to be advertising for it and signups began today. So we have doses for 100 seniors. Um, you can, uh, you have to have an appointment and you can make your appointment by calling the Salt Marsh and signing up. Um, we're imagining doing three shots every five minutes because we have three rooms and the hospital said they will provide three nurses. So we imagine moving the line pretty quickly and anybody who doesn't make it into the first hundred, um, Laura and Ginny will keep uh, a waiting list. So if somebody uh, opts out, we can start working on the waiting list. So that's where we stand with that. Uh, any questions about this? That's going to take place at the hospital? It will be in the Anderson building where Dr. Lepre is located and PASCON is located. Apparently there are three rooms there. So that's why we can separate people out and people can wait outdoors or depending on the weather in their cars so that we don't have people uh, lining up too close to each other. So we're trying to keep people socially distanced and do it efficiently. Great. And when will they start that? Um, it's going to be on one day, September 25, which is a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And will unfortunately, free or will we have to write down? Could you repeat that, Vanessa? I think she's cutting out, but will this be free is the question. Oh. It's free, um, yes, because uh, people are clearly have Medicare. So yes, free to them. There's no charge. Um, the visiting Vanessa, person. I, oh, sorry, just very briefly, Vanessa, did I, did I get the question correct? OK, we can move along when she gets back in. Yeah, that's what I heard. Is it free? And you probably have to bring your card, your, your, your Medicare card, Medicaid card. Uh, you can, you may have to bring it, but also everyone really is in the hospital system. What is that okay. system called? Uh, Patient gateway. Patient gateway. Right. Um, additionally, uh, we're going to have a, a, a late guest. Uh, Linda is going to be showing up uh, shortly to here to share a camera with me to join the meeting. So. Okay. Who? Oh, Linda, Linda Williams. Williams. Yeah. Um, and I'll just mention that the visiting nurses had volunteered to. to um, have two nurses give the shots, but it turns out that they are not allowed access into the Epic computer system at the hospital. So um, we have to rely on nurses from the hospital, um, a technicality that <laughs> seems sort of crazy. But um, I, I would like us to keep our connection with the visiting nurses because they've been so helpful for years and years with the Elder Expo. So we'll have to work on that again next year. One more thing, uh, Jericho, who did you say was joining you? Linda Williams will be in shortly. Okay. Ostensibly, that's what she just said in a phone call. 
So I think we can move on to the next agenda item, which is a discussion of the luncheon to honor the senior citizens of the year for 2021. And the reason I put this on the agenda is that Laura has been in contact with Rich Leone and who is at some point soon headed back to the island if he's not already here. Um, but she hasn't hooked up with him yet on the island, but she thought this would be a good time for us to address the whole issue of the luncheon uh, whether we should have it or not. If we don't have it, what should we do um, in its place? So um, this is open for discussion from anyone who has any ideas. And maybe Jericho, you want to start off since you definitely um, mentioned this is an important yeah, topic. I do. Uh, so Laura mentioned this to me earlier. Um, she was uh, wanted to get my input on it uh, with respect to COVID, I think. Um, I, I'm always weary of having a large gathering of people who are uh, at risk. Um, it, it would just be ironic in the wrong sense of the term if there was an exposure uh, at this event celebrating seniors who have managed to successfully get through the whole year. Um, I think specifically the event was planned to be held at the um, Fairgrounds restaurant, right? Yes, um, I think that could be that could be handled fairly well, but I, I would like, um, you know, just to have the potential. This will be end of September. I am um, reasonably sure we're going to see a spike following Labor Day. So if we just keep in mind the, the, the amount of transmission that might be on and we're very clear with everyone before they come um, so that we don't have a, a sort of repeat of the salt marsh exposure um, from bridge a, a while ago, I think that we should be OK. But um, I would like everyone to just keep in mind that, that these sorts of gatherings do entail higher risk than not having these sorts of gatherings. So that's a balance, uh, a question that you guys should um, keep in mind as you make any advice or uh, advisory or, or sort of discussion of this topic. I've got a question. Go ahead, Allison. Is there any place we can have it outside under a tent? And have it catered. Maybe Nantucket Catering Company would cater it, or Pudleys would ca could cater it. That's an option. Yeah, this is for us to throw out any possibility of honoring these people within the. I mean, I, mean, I would rather not be inside fairgrounds with the, with it with a big crowd. I mean, it's not big enough. The t tables are really close. Um, it's take takes longer than fifteen minutes. So. Um, when do we want it? Is there a wedding happening? Maybe we could use someone's wedding tent or does the town have a tent set up anywhere? Um, At the moment, we do not have a tent set up, nor do we have any outdoor facilities that we could sort of lend to it. Um, I think that the outdoor uh, location basically solves any and all of my issues around exposure levels. Um, I would be, I think that's the best way to go more or less. Um, should it be doable? Uh, was there a particular time frame that this was, we wanted to have, you know, have this done by, like was the end of this month? What about jetties, if we did something like that? Under their tent? And have them cater it. I mean, do they close, are they closing right after Labor Day or are they staying open until Columbus Day? Let me look that up for you real quick. Hello, Linda. Here you are. Uh, all right, guys. Give me one second. I'm going to switch over to the uh, the not these things, see me. just so like everyone can hear and talk. We'll do this thing, and you can scoot that out a little more if you like. No, never on the camera. Okay. All right. Would someone say something? Hi. Um, okay. Anybody else um, have any um, either comments or ideas? How do you feel about having this at um, all? Um, and how do you feel about it have, having it outside? How many people is it usually? It's about 100. This is the um, Senior of the Year Award dinner. Although um, uh, I think we could, if, if we're limited to 50 people, we could just invite or have, start with inviting their friends and family and then open it up to uh, a few others as well. So it would be, a, in that case, a smaller audience than usual. 
But well, usually it's about 100 people inside at the fairground. We're trying to figure out if we could fair, instead of fairground doing it out of what doors. If we, um, what if we, you know, find out if the jetties would do it on a, you know, a slow weekday for them, you know, anything after Labor Day is going to be slower there, or even um, the patio at the, um, at the whale. Oh, uh, whatever that place is called, or like or the whale, or the whale. That patio is very small, very small. Yeah, it, 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 it holds it holds seventy people. Not a yeah, cheek to jowl. What? I've been back there, cheek to jowl back there. Two to five, two to five. I'm trying to think. The sandbar. That was a good idea. There are, so their current schedule is, um, they're closed on Wednesdays. Other than that, they're 11 to three, three to five, five to eight. You could possibly see if you can sneak in on that Wednesday if you want to do a catered event or something. Well, they're closed on Wednesday. So they might be willing to like rent it out? No. 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 They not, have no. to have their staff there. And they they can't do that. Certified and everything yeah. else. Well, you know, a hundred lunches. Why wouldn't they want to do that really on a Tuesday? That's a good pop in their pocket. I'm well, sure. The reason they why they're closed here and there, as well as a lot of the restaurants who are never closed, is because they're burning out their staff. We're half burned out their staff. Because everybody's half staffed over here. It's, it's insane. You can get a job crawling in on your back to any place on this island right now. So, so should we should we talk to Jetties or we should make a list of, you know, I'm I'm just trying to think. Does Salt have a big tent? No. They have a they have a patio under their awning, which is fairly sizable. I've done other events there. Who? Oh. Salt. Where is it? Salt box. Is that what it's called? Um, oh well. Yes, yeah, Salt box. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I've done. I've been to other things under that tent, and that's a fairly sizable space, and it's outdoors. Under their is it, awning. Is it out back? Is it on the parking lot? Or it's not, no, it's, it's on the uh, old it's on road airport back. road. Jeez, I drive by every day. It's very nice. And they're local people. Yeah, it's just Dobbin. Or Norman, I think you were saying. Is it yeah. it's Genevieve, right? And yeah. So why don't we I mean I'm sure she'd be up for it. Oh, I, I think mean, she would be up for that. And but and there are those. And and there are those trucks too. So if we if we um and they got plenty of parking. What? If you all they got plenty of parking at Salt Box where they don't generally have plenty of parking at the beach. Not lately. <laughs> I'm well, sorry, the date and time for this. I think that depends on what we have. No, they can't be. What? In kind. They're not gonna give it to us. No. She said date and time. Date. Oh. I believe the date and time, Vanessa, is to be determined. That's correct. Thank you. Why don't we call the salt box and find out what kind of a day would be best for them? It could be that they have better, it's better for us to go Tuesdays from 12 to 2 or Wednesday. You know, why don't we ask the salt box to see if they have a better date and time for them? Yes. And then we have to give them a budget. Yeah. Well, it will be paid for by NCEA. They always pay for it. So, um, and I had invited Joe to be at this meeting today. He was gonna try to be here. Um, I would like to suggest, since we have a short list of options, that we ask Laura to make the calls to investigate each of these options. So yes. one, one stickling point on that is that Laura is trapped uh, off island for the next several days. She's not making her connecting flight back in from um, from wherever she was due to Ida, so she won't be back on back to work until next Monday. Well, That's Jericho possible. can give him a call. It doesn't matter who calls him. I could, yeah. Or also, or, or also, well, who of us knows them? Kendra, do you know them out there? I know Genevieve, but I mean, I'd have to. I'd want to have more info to go to them with it. But um, like saying it's a hundred dollars and. You know, do we ask them for like fifteen dollars a head or twenty dollars a head? Would we, you know? I wouldn't ask them for anything. I would ask them no. to tell us. No, I know. I mean, them. that's what I'm saying. I'm if, let me finish. I would like to say is if I could go say to them, 
she would say, well, how much? And I would say what our budget could be. What, what, do, what is the cost at the at the fairgrounds? We know. Do you know, Marianne? What yeah, the we knew was? in the past. You know, it's, I think the whole thing comes to about $3,000. But that I can't remember. That was a buffet also. Pardon? That was a buffet as well. Oh, I don't that, know. It's no, it is a buffet. It's a sit down lunch. It's it fish they serve you. Fisher Prime Rib. Oh, that's right. I couldn't eat either. Yeah. <laughs> I can move. Um, I don't think that Laura's being back until next Monday is going to make a difference. A great rush for this. And she knows all the working parts of this. So that's why I'm suggesting her to take the lead on it because each of us only knows a little bit of information. We don't right. know what our budget is. We don't know. Um, well, I just think that Laura knows all the details from the past that she could make sure she's covering all the bases when she talks to each one of them. Yeah, I so, hope that we make that decision that Laura does that. We can give her what we were thinking, either the salt box or um, the jetties. Um, so I know that, so salt box has an outdoor area. As long as there's more than two sides open, you'll also dodge any mask requirements. So this could be an unmasked event as long as it's held outdoors. She keeps the sides up. So what I would suggest is that we as a, or that you as a board uh, decide to have Laura do this. I'll, uh, then at the close of this meeting, send Laura and myself an email outlining what you'd like her to do. And then I'll follow up with her on Monday. Is that acceptable? Is that okay with everybody? Anybody opposed? She's out, she's out for the next three days. So. Yeah. Um, so let me make sure that I have the, the short list correct. Um, the jetties is one option. The salt box is another option. And somebody mentioned, um, or the whale on the patio. Should I also include that in the list? The only reason I don't think that's a good idea is that where the hell are you going to park? And also there's no covering. If it rains, yeah, there's, there's no nothing. I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go into town if you paid me at the moment. So I'll take that off the list. It's either jetties or the salt box. Oh, what yeah. about keepers? Oh, keepers. But she doesn't do lunch all the time, so I'm not exactly sure what her schedule is. But keepers is the same setup. They have that the uh, patio with the uh, awning. Yeah. And also, what about fairgrounds? Um, they have that outdoor area. If, the if it rains, we're if screwed. It, yeah, if it rains, there's only umbrellas. OK. Um, the other thing that Laura has to consider is um, it always involves local um, government officials as well as state level government officials. So um, they have their schedules have to be considered in this too in terms of selecting a date. So as I said, there are a lot of moving parts to this, which is why I think it's a good idea for Laura to make the inquiries. Me okay. Too. Um, at the close of this meeting, I will send an email to Laura and Jericho um, with the details that we've just discussed. Unless anybody has anybody else, anything else that you want to add to this or delete. <laughs> I think yeah. we're good. So, all right, sounds good. We will proceed with that. So, uh, Jericho, um, you are the next item on the agenda. Okay, um, I'll just do a real quick uh, recap of uh, state of play for COVID and then things to expect in the next two to three months. Um, right now, case numbers are down, testing numbers are all down. We're going through once a week reporting of the testing results. Um, the last two sewer samples have suggested that we're going to be seeing fewer and fewer um, results for the next week or two. But there's a fair chance that around Labor Day, the increased flow of people is going to cause another little mini spike. We should expect basically that plus wedding related spikes and uh, exposure chains the remainder of September. Once it hits October, the in interior is going to mean that we're going to see a lot of spread on the island. So it's important to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, at the moment, we also have just started doing third doses for the immunocompromised. Ooh, Moderna. And Ooh, we just yeah. got our first couple doses of Moderna into the town so that if we need to do a third dose for Moderna, we should be able to do that at least for the next week before it goes bad. Um, right now, if anyone you know needs a third dose or someone believes they qualify for third dose, 
That's only for immunocompromised people. They'll email um, myself or Heather. They'll set up a screening test. Once that's done, we're setting up little uh, tiny satellite clinics so that the immunocompromised don't have to go to our large clinics and be ex potentially exposed. Um, there's gonna be the eight, the six to eight month boosters are gonna start happening later on this year, most likely sometime around October. But that involves doing another 22 to 24,000 doses, which means it's gonna be a group effort with us, the hospital and a few other people. And it'll probably look a little bit more like the uh, VFW clinic than like the currently running clinics. Um, I think that's about it for COVID updates and forecasting. If anyone has any questions relating to COVID or anything like that, now's the time. Sure. So there's no list of people who are who can be contacted that are immunocompromised. They have to recognize that they need a shot and reach out? Yes. There is a list posted as to what qualifies you for immunocompromised, you know, cancer, uh, certain, certain other things. HIV. Well, you know, yeah, so like if you have the, dementia, if you have dementia, you might not count. remember. That doesn't count. That, count? As, that wow. doesn't count as a comorbidity. That doesn't count as a justifying um, condition for an immunocom for immunocompromise. So Heather's doing the clinical. Um, you are Heather's doing the clinical determination for that. Where. It's only supposed to be for people with a pre-approved list of conditions. If Heather finds any of those are also contribute like close enough, she will. She's erring on the side of making sure people who are at risk are in danger. But it's it's we have the list of immunocompromised people that was forwarded to us from the hospital. But the transient population and the wide array of different kinds of immunocompromised diseases means that we don't have a complete list of them at any given point in time. Wow, that's too bad. We've contacted all of the people we have on our various lists, and now people who have seen the news stories about uh, immunocompromised boosters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, are getting in touch with us. Um, and I don't think immunocompromised people tend to have very tight links with the medic with, with their doctors, et cetera. So I don't think we're missing too much of this demographic, demographic at the moment. And they're not calling it a booster, they're calling it an adjunct shot. We are getting boosters in October and November. They're, they have a whole bunch of different things that they call it. And they haven't adopted a particular one until later. Yeah, after they sent out the guidance. So, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, we, that's a fairly small population here. They tend to be fairly involved in, in their own healthcare already anyway. So it shouldn't be too much of, I don't think we're missing many of this category. I, in fact, think we have vastly more people than qualify getting in touch with us already. Okay. Good question, though. Any other COVID related questions? When is it going away? Never. No, I'm not kidding. It's never gone away. It's never gone away. It's never gone away. It'll just morph into something else. Perfect. Thanks, Mom. Any other questions for Jericho? Okay, can we move on to the next item? I'm all done. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thanks very much. Um, Laura is not here, so um, everybody got her uh, shorter than usual report, yeah. but you should have received that. And if you have any questions, you're going to have to send them to her personally because she's not able to be here. Um, so the next thing is dementia friendly Nantucket. Allison? <coughs> um, so Jericho, can you, can you play that video? All right, so I'll just do a little do... intro. Um, I, I just sent you the link. Yep, so again, we've been talking about you know having Nantucket become a dementia-friendly community. Um, we got started with the three workshops that happened just prior to when COVID um, broke out. And so to get you know to reintroduce ourselves to it, I've asked Jericho to screen share this two-minute video that um, dementia-friendly Nantucket. I mean, Dementia Friendly Massachusetts has put out. So um, yeah, why don't you just play that and we'll go from there. All right, is that showing up for people? Yes. All right, I'm gonna full screen this bad puppy. Except of course the person who is literally next to me cannot see it. Hold on a second. I can hear it. Yeah, it's on this one. Okay. 
someone with an intellectual. Um, there's the sound. What about the sound? Hi, honey. It's playing them on my end. Uh, it. No, I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I have a solution. I've turned on the closed captioning. Yeah, I'm not hearing it. I do a lot of the uh Jericho, stop talking. That concludes the audio visual portion of our presentation. And so maybe we can share that link with everyone so they can watch it on their own. So I'm going to dump that link into the chat uh, in just a moment. OK. Um, anyway, it'd be nice if we were all on board and maybe even took there's there's a, a training that you can take and this is just comes from the MCOA bulletin that they send out frequently. Um, and if we all as a board took the training, we'd know what it was, and then we could advocate a little bit better in the community for what it is. So let me just check something out. There's a training on the 13th. I'll find out how long it is and then share it with, with, with Mary Ann and, and Laura. Um, because it would be great if we participated in something that, or we had we had um, some known, if we knew what we were talking about when we were going out to the community. Because I because I've talked to you guys about it several times, and you know now that we can get started and maybe have some continuity, we could have Peggy come back, or we could review some of the workshops that we had done previously about recognizing people with dementia and making them feel comfortable. So that's, that's um, I'll find out a little bit more about the, the length of the Zoom training. And if anyone wanted to do that, they could. Um, and Beth Solzberg, who does the training is also the, the Memory Cafe person who, who is one of the best in the country. So he's a great resource and for us anyway, if we wanna try it, so. Would anyone be interested in, in doing the training if it were maybe an hour or two hours? I'd love to do it. I would. I'd okay, love great. Great, great, great. Yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's so worthwhile. Would it be off island or on island? Zoom. It's Zoom. Oh, Zoom. Wow. Yeah, you so can come over and do it with me. Go. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And, and Allison, that two minute video once we're all on board um, as a council, that two minute video might be something to that we could interest Daybreak in playing because they often have yeah. short videos. Oh, definitely. For everyone in the community to be uh, sensitive at least. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have a plan going forward or to reignite the plan that was going earlier mm -hmm. so that we could then, when we invited people to, to review the video, there could be other resources available or other meetings about, you know, because I think the workshops you went to those. Yes, it was great. Yeah, it, those, those workshops were really good. Um, and so, you know, maybe to schedule one workshop 
and then promote it by having people take a look at the video first. Um, but yeah, no, that's great. Put it on daybreak or current or something. And I think it's wonderful that you've had some first responders and police officers there. And, like so, and, so, and select board members. Yeah, select board members, the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, so. yeah. It, I mean, if we could do our own short video with them, it would be even greater. That's what, I'm gonna, that's what I was thinking, is that we do one that's more locally generated. Mm. Yeah, but and you know, I mean, all of took a current would do it and probably, um, probably the daybreak thing. I'm sure, I, yeah, we wouldn't have any trouble getting them to do it. I mean, daybreak, I mean, you know, current, one of the, one of the guys involved with NCTV's mother has Alzheimer's and, and they went to it. So there's plenty of support. We just have to start gathering it and knowing who to be in touch with for resources like filming, sharing information. So let, let's all, let us all get on board and maybe do the training so that when we talk to people, we can do it with one, one mind. Okay, good. So can you schedule that and let us all know? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll find out um, how long it takes because it's the 13th of September um, and there's a time, but I'll, I'll, I'll check in and share the registration form with everybody. Great. Or with Laura or Marianne to share it. I can't share it with you guys. Yeah, Laura's best. Okay. All right. That's it on uh, Alzheimer's for today. Uh, no, actually, one more thing. Um, um, AJ Malesko had an Ice Out Alts event at Cisco Brewers. It was a fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Association. Um, I, I did the Alzheimer's Association training as well, which is Know the Ten Signs. Um, the Alzheimer's Association and Dementia Friendly Massachusetts are different. The Alzheimer's Association is focused on fundraising for a cure. Um, Dementia Friendly Massachusetts or Nantucket is about your community and people living with, with Alzheimer's and dementia. So I, I'm a supporter of Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Association as well. Um, and I went to the fundraiser and actually spoke with um, AJ because she said that some of the resources of the money earned, they owned, earned over $250,000 for that, their first initial. Oh my tickets. God. It, yeah, tickets were 250 at the lowest level. And so I, I pointed up the 250 for, I was the wingman for all of us. Um, mm -hmm. Although Mary, there was uh, the Austin, I mean, there were a couple of other locals there too. So, um, that was great, but when it comes to how, I don't know how the Alzheimer's Association is planning on sharing or what amount of the proceeds will be, will stay on Nantucket. Nantucket, but, you yeah. know, AJ said that there's certain, that that was part of the conditions, and I don't know who besides us, because there's no Alzheimer's Association on Nantucket, would know how to direct those funds, so, you know, as we get people as supporters, we need to know where we can take or collect, you know, I, we need a good outreach list for people who are, have Alzheimer's and their, and their caregivers so that we can help them with funds that come in like, like this will come in. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm on her about how that's gonna happen. Um, Cause unless she, unless it goes to elder services, which would be great, um, I, th there's no Alzheimer's division of anything here that could um, share it or know where to direct it, even us. Mm. Right? Yeah, that's that's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and you're to, the dementia friendly part of this isn't so much as the fundraiser is the the help in opening the community. Correct. Um, to let us to let them know that they're that we are in touch and that we you know we've got yeah that we're and, yeah I have dementia but <laughs> yeah I know um, that you know we're not making money we're not trying to make money here we're trying to open up the community to acknowledge yeah. that we know there's a community of dementia people and there actually are grants that the state provides 
through the um, Office of Elder Affairs because Governor Baker wants Man Massachusetts to be dementia friendly. And so far as a, as a state, we're, we're doing really well. There are communities already that have been designated this, but as a, as a, as a tourist destination, what, a, what an incredible um, de, you know, accolade to give ourselves is. Um, well, isn't the, the grant that you speak of, isn't that what you applied for? Uh, nope. No. Oh. That, that was just for a memory cafe. Uh, okay. which, is, which is the most direct caregiver support program for people with dementia that we could have. So I'm, you know, I want to get something going for people right now living with the disease and use that sort of as a springboard to get the larger community involved. If we can target the people that really need the help and direct help towards them, that will will identify people interested in dementia friendly Nantucket at the same time. So. That's my thought. Well, good, pre good uh, presentation. Thank you, Allison. Oh, well, you're welcome. Now, thank you too for all you've yeah. done and giving this information. No, I'm I, I'm on it. This banner. Yep. Mm. Very worthwhile. So don't forget anything now, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually joining the study, Kendra. I should give you the link to join. Oh, to totally. Qualify for the studies. Absolutely. I do. All right. So, Allison, do you want to move on from there to uh, ESCCI if you have anything to say about them? Well, besides the fact that they didn't have a quorum to um, um, their client load is up 8% in the last year. It was just the end of the fiscal year. So, um, Mashpee Commons has, oh, Mashpee has started their congregate lunch program. Um, they were talking about all of the people who, who apply or express interest in um, elder services that, and, and so they're initiating a new software system that tracks people who don't follow through. So people call and say, oh, I'm interested in help, but then, you know, they sort of don't follow through or they don't have anyone to advocate for them to continue or they don't understand the programs. And so um, they just, you have, to, you have to accept services before they are provided. So there's gonna be a new software system that will track people who apply and then don't follow through, which I thought was a really good, um, you know, who's falling off the apple cart? A lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, good news about money. Um, this, you know, the there's a surplus in the CARES federal money that Elder Services has. So, as far as their budget, they're really they're looking great. Um, and you know, one thing that they do at several of the other um, um, senior centers is there is an ABC mentoring program where seniors mentor um, um, kids in the public school system. Is that something that we've ever done? Well, there is a mentoring program, but it's not specifically with seniors. It's for any adult to mentor kids. Uh, you know, you know, maybe that's something that we could um, promote within the Salt Marsh for for, for seniors um, because there there's a um, you know, through elder services, there's some educate, you know, whatever. It's it's been a really popular program at senior centers in um, on the Cape. And then Leslie Shear, who's been the director for the last, I don't know, 18 years, maybe 32, I can't remember. Um, she's retiring. So there's gonna be a, a search for the new CEO of the elder services of Cape Cod and the islands. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's our elder services is the best in the state for in-home visits, the highest ranked, you know, cause they, they, they catalog like agencies do They're and they're the best in the state for in-home visits as far as quality and quantity and everything. So that's, that's great to hear for us. Yeah. And is that all of the Cape and the islands or? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Good. So that's that's it from them. Any questions for Allison on this? Did you say Nantucket was number one in mass for home visits? No, um, um, yes, I dropped our, my phone. Our, our elder services, ESCCI, is for the Cape and the islands. And as a, right. as a group, um, we're, the, we're the best in the state for in-home visits. Oh, OK. Thank you. Is that Linda's hand? Yes. <laughs> Let's all do it. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Linda's hand. Diane Seely. <laughs> I guess that does not mean you want to. Does that mean you want to speak? Because you're on mute. Okay. <laughs> nope. We're Thank singing. you, Allison. <laughs> Just waiting. Yeah, we're singing shanties in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Your hand coming up like that is kind of weird. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is my report on uh, NCEA, and I don't really have much to say because they've be really been working on their board development and fundraising, getting ready for the next uh, iteration of fundraising. And the only thing on their last, this past meeting, which was just a week or two ago, um, that you might even be remotely interested in is the fact that they're talking about knocking down the wall between the two offices next to Laura's. So there's Laura's office and then there are two other small offices next to hers. So they're planning on making that into one space that can be divided if needed, but that means it would be able to be used for some programs that only involve, you know, half a dozen people or so, but at least it could be used for programs. So um, it, it was not a load bearing wall between those two spaces. So it will become one larger space. That's, That's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, we've come to the end of our agenda, unless anybody has uh, comments on anything else. I'm good. So we just need to um, figure out a date and time and a location for the uh, seniors luncheon acknowledgement. Yeah. And um, well, I'll summarize that for Jericho and Laura. And if you all would like to be copied on that, I'll just copy you. Would you like a copy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yes. I'll copy you. So I'll do that later today. No, no, no. Send it to Laura, and she will copy us. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Don't, don't okay. we'll, all right. We'll copy. Sounds good. And so, so if we strike out with the, um, if we strike out with the places that we have listed, maybe we could um, ask them? ask the yells if they have an event going on, and we could maybe have them cater and do it under their tent. There are people that do that are not going to have a hundred cars parked in their driveway. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. And we can't have two events in a row like that. Okay. They've been big supporters. If we could give them some some paying business, that'd be nice. But all right, I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. And all right, who who moved? <laughs> Allison yeah. moved. Allison. <laughs> okay. Second by Kendra. Oh, thank you. All thank right. You. See you next. Bye, hands. Hi, butterfly. <laughs> Bye. Bye, all. So Bye. this is on the town website. People can watch these when they when they're bored, you know. They're mm -hmm. they're on tape, and if, if anybody wants to watch us on tape, God be with you. Yep. Yeah, the, the damage <laughs> exactly. has been done already. If they're if they're going through the tapes on this. Okay. Goodbye. All right. Bye. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Oh, uh, what? Real quick, the um, link for the video is in the chat here. It's gonna disappear as soon as everyone logs off, just so we know. Or just email it to us. Yeah, I think it's in an email. We put oh, that, yeah. Jericho, put that in a letter that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that needs email. to be viewed by everybody. But. I'll just forward that to Laura to pass along. Yeah. All right, guys, see you later, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.